I previously made a video on the Heathkit DX60B transmitter. One of my first videos, it's hard to believe that it was made 14 years ago in 2011. While I've powered the transmitter up and used it periodically since then, I thought it was time to give it a full checkup and restoration as I hadn't made many changes to it since I originally acquired it, used in 1977. In this video I'll go over some of the modifications and component replacements I made to keep it in good working order. The modifications are based on recommendations from a number of websites and YouTube videos which go into more detail. The first step was to do an inspection and light cleaning to remove any dust, dirt and some of the corrosion. No bad parts such as burn resistors were observed. I powered it up and confirmed that it could be tuned up and was working. Some modifications had already been done by me earlier. I had replaced the original two-wire line cord with a heavier three-wire cord and connected the ground wire to chassis ground. I had changed the transmitter output connector from an RCA phono jack to the more common and less easily pulled out SO239 UHF connector. The smaller knobs had been replaced by the more attractive Heathkit SBHW series style knobs, except for the function switch, which was a non-Heathkit knob. I put a matching knob on the function switch. I also took the opportunity to replace the knobs on my HR10B receiver to the same type so that both units match. Another safety related change was to replace the original self-resetting circuit breaker with a more reliable 3 amp 3AG fuse and holder. This required drilling a hole in the chassis for the fuse holder. I wired the power core live conductor straight to the fuse. I also made a label with the fuse rating. One of the most common failures in the DX60B is the contacts on the function switch which can eventually become burnt by the power surge and arcing when switching the AC power on and off and the high voltage switching when going in and out of standby mode. There are different approaches to address this and I opted for the simpler ones. Adding a CL90A inrush current limiter to the AC line will reduce the initial power surge and protect the associated switch contacts. It can be installed in place of the original circuit breaker. Note that in operation it gets warm so you should keep any wires away from it. The high voltage switch contacts can be protected by installing a 5K 5 watt resistor across pins 4 and 5 of the function switch. This will reduce the power surge and arcing across the switch. A small terminal strip mounted on an existing hole in the chassis is a suitable place to install it. It can also get warm. With these two changes, I no longer hear a thump when turning on the transmitter or any arcing when going in and out of standby mode. Another hard to replace part in the unit is the meter. If any of the meter shunt resistors fail, the meter can be overloaded and burn out. The meter can be protected to reduce the likelihood of this happening by putting two back-to-back -back 1 in 4007 diodes across the meter to protect it by clamping the voltage at 0.7 volts. Electrolytic capacitors are prone to failing over time. It's good practice to replace them in any old electronics that will continue to be used. The original units included two two-section caps, one in a metal can, and two other capacitors. The company Hayseed Hamfest sells a cap kit which includes a replacement for the metal can as well as the others. So I opted for this and ordered a set. At the same time I also ordered a cap kit for my HR10B receiver. The replacement can cap looks great and the others are smaller than the originals and easy to replace. Paper capacitors, sometimes covered in wax, also tend to fail over time and are recommended to be replaced. There are three in the DX60B and I replaced them with modern caps that are smaller and also have higher voltage ratings. Some people recommend replacing the rectifier diodes in the power supply, but mine were working fine and I left the originals in. The carbon resistors used in equipment of this era tend to increase in resistance value over time. Some may still be within the 10 or 20 percent tolerance and others may be much higher than the nominal value. I measured the value of all resistors and replaced any that were out of tolerance, which ended up being about half of them, uh, 16 by my count. The resistors used for the meter shunt circuit in particular need to be accurate in order to indicate the correct reading. For those I measured the values of several resistors I had on hand and used the ones that were closest to the exact value. Another suggested modification is on tube V1. There's an internal connection in the tube between pins 2 and 9. The wiring of the circuit depends on the connection being there. Some people have reported that adding a jumper across the pins 
can help ensure that there's a low resistance path in case the tube doesn't have one. The need for the mod is somewhat questionable, but easy to do, so I went ahead and did it. I cleaned all switches with contact cleaner. I had found that the meter switch was not always reliable in the grid position. This is apparently common. Cleaning the switch contacts seemed to correct it. The final steps in restoration were to make two adjustments as per the manual. One is done in AM mode with a microphone connected. The other adjustment is neutralization, which I also performed as per the manual. After that, I left the unit on for a period of time, and I checked that I was able to tune the transmitter on all bands and was seeing the expected output power levels and a low SWR into a dummy load. The transmitter should now be good to use for the foreseeable future. I may still follow up with two remaining items. The two large knobs are mismatched. I may try to obtain one of the original knobs, like the one on the right, possibly 3D printing it, as I've done for some other equipment. I just need to get some 3D filament of the matching color. I would also like to either change the microphone connector to a two-pin jack that would fit my A-Static D104 microphone, or make a suitable adapter cable.